Hello Truth Seekers and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. It's your favorite neighborhood critic, back with some piping hot royalty that's about to make your head spin. Buckle up because this drama is juicier than a perfectly ripe peach, and I'm here to spill it all. So gather around my royal watchers because we're diving deep into the latest chapter of the Windsor Family Saga. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. We're talking about the end of an era, folks. The final curtain call on brotherly bonds between William and Harry, with King Charles caught in the crossfire. It's like watching a real-life Game of Thrones, minus the dragons, though, I'm sure. Meghan could conjure one up if she tried hard enough. But before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss the explosive content we have in store. So now, let's get things straight first. It's April 2021 and our boy Harry's back on the British soil for the first time since he and Meghan dropped their royal mic and moonwalked out of the monarchy. The occasion? Prince Philip's funeral. Talk about awkward family reunions, am I right? But our ginger prince saw an opportunity, a chance to mend fences, to bridge the gap, to, oh, who am I kidding? He probably just wanted to see if he could get his old room back at the palace. But jokes aside, Harry decided it was time for a good old fashioned family powwow. A secret meeting, if you will. Cue the dramatic music. Now, you'd think a funeral would be the perfect time for a family to come together, put aside their differences and support each other, but nope, not for the Windsors. These folks can hold a grudge longer than the Queen's reign, God rest her soul. So there's Harry, waiting for his dad and brother like a kid waiting for Santa on Christmas Eve, except instead of presents he's expecting, what exactly? A warm welcome? A group hug? A we miss you come back banner? Oh honey, our boy Harry might as well have been waiting for pigs to fly. And then, like two ominous storm clouds on the horizon, William and Charles appear. Now remember, this is just a month after Harry and Meghan's sit down with Oprah. You know, the one where they basically threw the entire royal family under the double-decker bus? Yeah, that one. So tensions were higher than the Tower of London. Harry describes their expressions as grim, almost menacing. Yikes. Talk about a frosty reception. It's like they were auditioning for the next Bond villain role, and poor Harry, he's standing there probably wishing he could click his heels three times and go back to sunny California. But here's the kicker, folks. When Harry greets them with a weak Willie and Pa, aw, how cute. Their response is, drumroll please, Harold. That's it. One word. Talk about a conversation killer. I've had warmer exchanges with my toaster. Now, let's pause for a moment and really dissect this. Harry flew across an ocean, braved the British weather, which is no small feat, let me tell you, and all he gets is Harold. That's colder than a polar bear's toenails. It's like they were trying to win the most passive-aggressive family award, and let me tell you, they are strong contenders. But wait, there's more. In his book Spare, which by the way, is a title that screams I've got daddy issues, Harry spills even more tea. He talks about feeling vulnerable, about thinking of his late mother for strength. It's enough to make you want to reach through the pages and give the guy a hug, or maybe a reality check. I'm still deciding. And get this, Harry claims there was so much more he could have said about his father and brother, but he held back. Why? Because he didn't think they'd ever forgive him? Uh, newsflash Harry, I'm pretty sure that ship has sailed, capsized and sunk to the bottom of the Atlantic, but hey, points for optimism, right? Now let's fast forward to more recent events. King Charles gets diagnosed with cancer, sending positive vibes your way, your majesty. And Harry jets back to the UK faster than you can say God save the king. It's like a royal version of the prodigal son returns, except this prodigal son brought a whole lot of baggage with him. Harry goes on Good Morning America because nothing says I'm worried about my dad like a prime time interview, right? And he's all, I love my family and the, I'm grateful for that. It's sweet really, but then he drops the bomb. He thinks the diagnosis will have a reunifying effect on the family. Oh, Harry. Sweet, naive Harry. Bless his heart. And here's the thing, folks. Family drama is like a boomerang. It always comes back around, and in the royal family, it comes back with a vengeance, wearing a crown and waving from a balcony. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or should I say the American actress in the palace, Meghan Markle. Now, I'm not saying she is the cause of all of this drama, 
but I'm not not saying it either. It's like she walked into Buckingham Palace, took one look around and said, challenge accepted. Some folks are saying Harry's regretting his decision to, and I quote, backstab the royals for spotlight hungry Meghan. Ouch. That's harsher than the Queen's corgis on a bad day. But is there any truth to it? Well, let's examine the evidence, shall we? Exhibit A. Harry's gone from being the cheeky, lovable spare to the royal family's black sheep faster than you can say Megxit. Exhibit B. He's traded his military uniforms and royal duties for... What exactly? Netflix deals and Spotify podcasts? It's like he's gone from Prince Charming to Prince of Infomercials. Exhibit C. The man wrote a whole book airing the royal family's dirty laundry, I mean. Talk about washing your silk underwear in public... But here's the million dollar question, or should I say million pound question. Is Harry really regretting his choices or is he just missing his old life? Is he yearning for the days of cutting ribbons and waving from balconies, or is he truly happy in his new California dream? The truth is we don't know and we probably never will because despite all the interviews, all the books, all the Netflix specials, the royal family is still enigmatic as ever. They're like a box of fancy chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, but you can bet it'll be expensive and slightly disappointing. Now let's circle back to William and Charles for a hot second. These two seem to be thicker than thieves these days. It's like they've formed their own little No Harry's Allowed club, and can you blame them? They probably feel like they've been through the ringer with all the tell-all interviews and memoir revelations. But here's the thing, family is family, and no matter how many oceans separate them, no matter how many Oprah interviews come between them, blood is still thicker than water, or tea in this case. So what's next for the royal family? Will Harry and Meghan make a triumphant return to the fold? Will William and Charles extend an olive branch? Or will they just continue to passive-aggressively snipe at each other through carefully worded press releases? My money's on the latter, folks, because if there's one thing the British royal family excels at, it's maintaining a stiff upper lip while everything falls apart around them. It's like they're playing a never-ending game of emotional Jenga, and we're all just waiting to see which piece will make the whole thing topple. But let's be real for a second. All this drama, all this back and forth, all these tearful interviews and shocking revelations, it's exhausting. And not just for us spectators. Imagine being in the middle of it all. It's enough to make you want to abdicate and move to a deserted island. Oh wait, Harry already did that, kind of. At the end of the day, this is still a family. A very public, very wealthy, very dysfunctional family, but a family nonetheless. And like all families, they have their ups and downs, their feuds and reconciliations, their Harolds and their Willies. So what do you think? Is this really the end of the road for William and Harry's brotherly bond? Has Charles finally had enough of the drama? And most importantly, do you think Meghan's planning her own tell-all book? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.